Are you sick and tired of being sick and tired? It's been said that an apple a day keeps the doctor away, or does it? I was feeling so bad. I asked my family doctor just what I had. It's time to get a new prescription for your life. Get ready for your daily dose of Healthy Talk Radio, the show that's empowering your health. And now, here's America's health and lifestyle coach. Live. Do you want to get well? This is the show where your health is your wealth. Thriving is more important than just surviving, and the only thing lost are those unwanted pounds. This is Healthy Talk Radio from heart disease, aches and pains, to even your basic cough and sneeze. This is Talk Radio that helps you get well, stay well, and live well. Lines are open, 888-283-7272. It's a new prescription for a new you, America. Michelle, we're kicking off with you. How can I help, darling? Um, hi. Hi. How are you doing? I am living well. What's up? Good. Um, well, I've been to the doctor a couple of times about an issue with abdominal pain. Okay. With um, It's always localized, like right below my right rib cage. Mm-hmm. And, you know, in the gallbladder area. Sure. Um, it's not something that's always constant. It comes and goes. Um, I'll go weeks without it hurting at all. And then when it does start hurting... It's every time I eat, you know, all of the signs of a gallbladder issue that you would read about on the Internet or, or whatnot. So, right. uh, you know, my doctor's wanting to go ahead and do, like, um, ultrasound, PIDA scans, all of that stuff. And I know that a lot of doctors can be really quick to diagnose abdominal pain with the gallbladder. So I'm just trying to see if there's anything that I can do or if there's anything else that it could be to kind of avoid going that direction. Well, let's talk about it. Let's back up for just a second. Okay, so it comes and goes. It's pain underneath the rib cage, and so that's it, but it, it's not constant, right? It, when it happens, does it feel kind of crampy a little bit, like it grabs um, you? When it's not hurt, like when it's not severe, yes, it feels like a dull ache or cramp under there, but when it's like, at, at periods of time, it, like, literally stops me where I'm at, and I kind of have to, like, I grab it. I don't know. It doesn't really help at all, but it kind of stops me in my tracks and almost brings tears to my eyes because it almost feels like I've never been stabbed, but I guess that would be the, <laughs> you know, the <laughs> terminology for it is a stabbing pain. Stabbing pain. Yeah, and do you, let's see what's the best way to say this. How, are you under a lot of stress at all? Aren't we all? Yeah, yes, but I when I, I when I say that time. though, when I say that, yeah, I mean we all are. Yeah. I mean if you live in America right now, everybody is. But <laughs> yeah, I'm under a say, high stress situation. I mean I have a stressful job. I just lost my father five months ago, and there you taking go. care of a four year old and things like that. But yeah, are you close with your dad? Oh, extremely. <laughs> hmm. You know, in Chinese medicine. When you go through a period, extreme periods of any emotion, whether it be guilt or blame or there's more I could have done or could, you know, I wish I wish I had him still here. There's emotions that happen that when they're so intense. So if you were that close to your dad, if they were so intense that it directly affects certain organ systems. And a lot of times, and this is definitely not standard medicine, there's nowhere in the medical textbooks that talk about this at all. But in Chinese medicine, they talk about it a lot. And, of course, that's been around a lot longer than our system. So it's it's pretty amazing. And how what happens is it drives down your acetylcholine levels, which is one of the brain chemicals. But, I mean, the bottom line is I can tell you two things. It's just my thought, okay? The root cause of these kind of things typically are a loss. Like when you said you lost your dad five months ago, that was a huge statement. Because I know you've got responsibilities with your with your child and and all of that, but, I mean, if you've got a high-stress job, are you a single mom or are you married? Single mom. 
Yeah. And so your dad was probably your anchor. Yeah, he helped a lot with my with my son. I have a wonderful boyfriend that helps tremendously as well, but there's always that gap of, you know, something missing and I haven't had time to grieve. I was only off for three days after his death and you know, I mean, I work in oncology. <laughs> <laughs> and multi-specialty and stuff. So, it's, yeah. you know, I can't miss work. There's other there's other people who are depending on these medications. And yeah, it's just something that I, yeah, I had to get back to work. It was a brand new job, and then he passed. And so it's, it's definitely been stressful, and I've been trying to get into talk to someone about it and stuff. But the doctor yeah. just prescribed me low-dose Xanax for sleep um, and for, you know, anxiety and panic attacks r- directly after the passing. But other than that, I haven't really taking that medication for, gosh, probably at least a month and a half to two months. Hmm. Um, so that's, yeah, just that pain. <laughs> yeah. <In my> stomach, <laughs> but. Well, and it's, and that's pretty normal. I mean, like you said, you didn't have time to grieve. So, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? So you've gone through one of the toughest, I think it's one of the toughest losses in life is to lose your father. And, right. and your mother. I mean, that's, it's, there's, it's very difficult. It's a tough thing to go through. Uh, and yeah, I mean, those are natural emotions and I, I've seen that a ton with people where they have the pain in the, in the rib cage right there. So that's why if you did the scan and all that right now, the standard test that we use just to check kind of the function of the gallbladder, it would be doing pretty decent. And that's why it comes and goes like that. I and mean, you carry a lot of that. It's weird. The emotions kind of store themselves in certain organ systems and that's, that is that. Like I said, if you're if you're in the healthcare field at all, that's not standard medicine. But if you study acupuncture and if you study Chinese medicine, it's written all over the place and pretty amazing. The mind, how it affects the body, is pretty unbelievable. So, I mean, what do you do from this point? Uh, one is you definitely want to take, and I don't know what this means for you, but as, as you're kind of grieving through this and going through this is make sure you take time to do that and don't just run in the rat race and then all of a sudden it's Christmas and you still haven't, you know, you just kind of pushed it, kind of tucked it down. Because when you tuck it, guess where it's going? <laughs> it's going down and that's some of the pains that you're feeling because you're not releasing those emotions and letting them out. And it's tough to do, I know, but I'm just, that is, that's the case. There's a lot of things you can do nutritionally to support it, to keep your acetylcholine levels up. But again, the, the negative emotions typically on the inside, when you hold them in, that that's a big key. Um, nutritionally, there's a lot of things that will bring acetylcholine levels up. Eggs are really good. All your protein-rich foods like red meat, organic and grass-fed, of course, and uh, turkey, uh, salmon. A lot of the uh, fish are really good at bringing acetylcholine levels up. And there's some good supplements, too. Your healthy fats like almonds and walnuts, uh, avocados. Make sure that during this time, you know, with work and being a single mom and everything, that your nutrition stays on top. Got to be really good on the nutritional side. And that's going to be your best weapon as you walk through this. Uh, vitamin B6 can be helpful. But I'll tell you some things that was taught that were taught to me by a professor in medical school that I just found so interesting and it lined up with everything I had learned just around a lot of the natural things I've always studied. But phosphatidylcholine, which is lecithin, you can get that as a supplement. He actually taught us in, in class, I'll never forget it, that when you raise phosphatidylcholine and lecithin in the body, it raises acetylcholine before bedtime and can put you into a deep REM stage sleep. Well, I was, I mean, at that time I was in med school, so of course I was stressed out and not sleeping, right? And I tried it myself. I was dreaming like I was, it was, you could, vivid dreams. So those are some things you might want to consider as you're walking through this process. To find out more, connect with On Call Radio online at InShapeNetwork.com. Phone lines are open, 888-283-7272. Welcome back to the show. Are you a big Chili Pepper fan? Well, you should be, because they found now that 
there's a component in chili peppers that can aid in weight loss and also battle against fat buildup by promoting helpful protein changes. A new study report, scientist John Wan Yoon and his colleagues believe the findings could bring about new ways to treat obesity, which is a global health threat linked to diabetes, high blood pressure, and heart disease. Obesity may also cause asthma and even prostate cancer. For their study, scientists fed lab rats a high-fat diet, and some of the diets were supplemented with the component found in chili peppers. Now, the results showed that this uh, component in the treated rats lost 8% of their body weight and showed changes in levels of at least 20 key proteins found in fat. These changes provide valuable information about the new molecular insights into a mechanism of the anti-obesity effects of chili peppers. So look into chili peppers and keep them a part of your regular diet. Even they can... Of course, they have them in a supplemental form as well. But keep that up because the benefits of that, along with, of course, conjugated linoleic acid, CLA, and green tea extract, all of those have produced incredible health benefits all the way around, especially a lot of the polyphenols that are involved in that and take you to the next level in your health. 888 Lines are open. Our preferred wellness providers are health care providers in your area that believe the same way we do. Nutrition, prevention, and lifestyle-based care. So if you need to find someone in your area, our preferred wellness provider team members are available every single day to help you go from where you are to where you need to be. Daryl, you're next with us on the show. Uh, hey, how you doing, Doc? Yeah, I'm living well. What's up, Daryl? Uh, well, I had went to the doctor for a routine, like, checkup, you know, physical. Mm-hmm. And they did blood work, and they found that I had low platelets. Um, it was in the 40,000 range is what he was saying. Okay. But when he, he <clears throat> promoted me to a hematologist, and the hematologist, it, Finally, it came up to about 60-something, so it's been staying steady. So I've been going to the doctor about every three months now. And I just okay. wondered if there was anything natural or any way to to kind of, you know, get a boost in the platelets, you know. Well, there's a couple things you can do. Did they suggest anything to you at all? Well, they they did a steroid type, type of um, deal for about two weeks, and it didn't really do a whole lot, and so I was just trying to find out. You know, I, I, I forget the name of the um, steroid, but 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 it didn't seem to do anything, but just really make me have sweat sweat problems at night. You know, when I sleep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, so. there's a couple of things that can be real helpful. A lot of times, when your platelets are low, unless there's a serious medical issue going on. The platelet count can go up by using vitamin K. And vitamin K can be taken in a liquid form. Mm -hmm. A lot of health food stores have it. But the best source of vitamin K are dark leafy greens like kale and spinach. And including Mm -hmm. that three or four times in your diet per day, whether you you blend it up and use it in in shakes or smoothies or if you just eat it like salad. But, I mean, the dark Mm -hmm. leafy greens play such a big role in our overall health. It's amazing. At what it does. So it might be something you consider, you know, just including in your diet, but you will notice a major difference. Like if you do your blood work and about mm-hmm. eight weeks later, you let's say you do three or four servings of dark leafy greens and use vitamin K, you'll notice a drastic difference in eight weeks in your blood work. And again, provided unless there's something just in a major capacity that's holding them down. So you might want to look at that. And it's just good for your health anyway as far as increasing the greens. Now, the vitamin K supplement form will really put it over the top. So you might want to just use the foods. Uh, That's what a lot of doctors recommend and nutritionists recommend is just by increasing a lot of the dark leafy greens daily and see how that changes. Plus, you're going to get plenty of iron. You get plenty of B12. And you'll get just, I mean, they're just packed full of nutrients to increase your overall health. So just a couple of things to think about. You know, kind of when you're in your journey. And the other thing, too, is it doesn't really have an effect on platelet count so much, but sublingual B12 can be helpful, too, for overall energy levels, especially in that type of situation. All right, 888 Lines are open with questions about your health. Let's go now to Julia. Hi, Julia. Hello. How are you? I'm living well, darling. Good. How can I help? I have a question 
I've been following um, blood tests for about 10 years for my body, thinking I had arthritis back when I was in my late 20s, I've had a stressful okay. life. Um, my fingers are now feeling at 47. This is quite a significant time lapse, but um, there's a tightness on the tops of my fingers below the knuckles. Okay. Below the top knuckles. And below the top knuckles. Okay. Yeah. And so I have had my ANA tested, and my general question, that's an anti-nuclear antibodies, for the, for the, um, and they're kind of um, high. They're not extremely high. My rheumatologist says there's no lupus. Um, physically, my feet are funny, kind of. I get numbness in my feet, and my fingers are bothering me. Uh, I don't want to have a crooked hand the next time I talk to you, and I don't want to have <laughs> claw fingers the next time I speak to you. Uh, I agree. Um, I know there's a lifestyle issue that I'm having. It's absolute um, isolation is what I'm living in right now. You are? Um, yes, I'm in an isolated environment. Um, okay. And it's, 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 it's going to, um, I have to break the isolation at some point. Um, and lifestyle, I have to, I'm going into a lifestyle change. I just right. lost my mother and that really, in October, and that really kind of messed me up with the grief. So, and the, so as soon as, like, as soon as my mother died, my face just didn't stop getting red all the time. Were you close with her? Um, my mother? Yeah. She was close with me. I got it. So there's a lot of unresolved issues that you had with your mom that you never got to really resolve, right? Well, she was a lovely woman. There's a lot of, yes, exactly, right, yeah. Yeah, and, and so you're still carrying that. Let, let's do this. We're going into a break right now, and let's 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 come back to this for just a minute. We'll, we'll talk about, I know, some of the, the changes that are happening in your joints, but also we'll get into some of the other issues. So hang tight. And we'll tackle that in just a minute. Triple eight two eight three seventy two seventy two lines are open. Questions about your health? We'll be right back with more healthy talk radio. This content is brought to you by our good friends at Liberty Health Share, the absolute best alternative to traditional health insurance. Visit Liberty Health Share at libertyhealthshare.org. So let's go back to that for just a minute. So you, you've been having some pain above the knuckles. Is that right? Where they get kind of tight. And we were talking about how you lost your mother uh, several months ago. And that was a challenge within itself. So you know that that's played a role in some of the issues. Living in a little bit of isolation now. And if you had to ask a question, what would it be? Like where, I know you're painting the story for me and, and that's good, but like if we could tackle something, what would you want to tackle? The joint pain? My inflammation, and I, and, and it's not just, you know, I think I think I'm dealing with therapy. I've dealt with therapists since I was 13. You say 13 years old. I'm 47. I don't. I think got it, it. That's not been not tapped into, and I'm a Christian, so I mean, I'm born again. I haven't. That is not something. The psychotropics for 20 years. Yeah, and I understand. Antidepressants for 20 years. This body has has gone through uh, not clinical depressions, but. I live up in the in New York, right below Canada, and I'm really I'm I'm focused. I have seasonal affected very badly up here. Okay. Um, matter of fact, my body is coming alive again. I know that sounds <laughs> unusual. No, it's but not. It's actually pretty common, especially dark. for that area, like Albany, uh, Utica, Syracuse. That area just gets that haze over it during the winter time. I've All heard. The time. Yeah. And it's not just the cold and the snow; it's the gray. Right. Yeah. 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 It's rough. It's rough on my body. I'm, I'm, I'm healthy. I don't have any habits, except that I don't have continuity in my eating. I probably okay. don't eat very, there's not, I'm a little erratic in my eating. I'm not terribly overweight, maybe 15, 10 pounds. I do have a good doctor who is actually saying, well, a lot of doctors are saying, like you had said tonight, that food is medicine, and I wholeheartedly believe that. But it, sometimes I don't have any appetite, and that's another problem. You know, I've, been, I've had... Um, I've had some um, 
but the psychotropics are bothering me. And I do have a question about my father, who's 81. I have to ask it later. That's okay. I, I think one of the biggest things for you really to tackle is – is to come up with you know a solid game plan, an eating game plan that's going to lower inflammation in the body, that's steady, and the anti-inflammatory diet would be really good for that. It's just basically lean quality proteins like chicken, fish, beef, and eggs. It's real balanced. The lower glycemic carbs, which I'm sure you're familiar with, like the, the fruits and vegetables, and then the healthy fats. And I like to do three meals a day and a couple of snacks in between so you're steady, you know, your blood sugar stays steady, and that's really important too for brain chemistry for things like dopamine and serotonin and keeping GABA levels stable. Uh, I mean, all of that is, is really important. That's why the proteins and the fats balanced out steady throughout the day can make such a big difference in your overall brain chemistry. And for you, I think that would play a big role too. Do you ever get your vitamin D tested? You probably do, but have you had it checked recently? My, my protein is fine. Or my, um, my GABA or my D is fine. It is? D is fine, yeah. Okay, good. That's good. Plenty of fish oil? No, I don't, and I don't know where to actually get pure fish oil, good fish oil. There's a, the website to go to is lifestyleresearch.org. It's a mercury-free fish oil. Really good. So, I mean, that that is a big key. When you're dealing with, with some of the things you're talking about, uh, fish oil, I know it sounds so remedial, but it, if, if it's not a part of your daily routine, then you'll notice a difference. You'll notice in your brain chemistry. You'll notice in your joints. You'll notice in your gut. You'll notice in your skin, your hair, your nails, and your hormones. I mean, it really, that is kind of like the multi, I think that's more important than a multivitamin. I, I, if, I, if you have to ask me, throw away everything and take one thing, I would say fish oil, literally, just from the research I've seen and, and things I've studied. Now, vitamin D runs a close second, but see, if you take cod liver oil, it's got vitamin A and vitamin D naturally occurring in it already. So that can be really helpful. So I think dietary reason or dietary changes for you sounds like it's going to be, you know, kind of the best choice and avenue. You, the, the good news is that even though you've gone through this and you've been going through it for years, is that you've got a pretty good self-awareness, it sounds like, for yourself. You know, like you're pretty aware of what's going on. And a lot of people don't even have that. So the fact that you have that, then you just need some tools that will kind of maintain and kind of take you up to the next level and keep you steady. So we're coming into a new place now where even the gray is still there a little bit. The the sun will start poking out again, which is great. Now, what were you talking about about your dad? Reduce the pain in my fingers. Is that going to go eventually if I stay steady? Did that eventually leave me? It's It's tough to say unless, you know, I was your doctor there and can monitor you all the time. I can tell you just in general that people that I've seen and worked with through the years, that it helped tremendously with, with issues of arthritis and joint pain. And I've seen, I've seen tremendous results. And, of course, you know, everybody throws the disclaimer that it, it varies with different people. But as a whole, so are you asking me, should you take them or should you not? Or what do I think about it? What, what is your question about them? Um, and should I, should I stop taking them? I, I can't tell you that. That's that again. That's that's a question for somebody that has to be overseeing you and watching you. I mean, I think they have their place. I don't think they're they're crazy to take or um, you know terrible for your health. I think short term they can help stabilize brain chemistry. That's my kind of my thought with it because I'm not against medicine at all, and I think they do have their place. But I think it's more about Long term, unless it's bipolar, I, I think that it, it really comes down to getting the brain chemistry balanced through nutrition, and you can do that. And I talk about that in my book, and it's really, from what I've seen, that, you know, let's say that psychotropics were stabilizing you, okay, at, you know, 90%. And let's say that you started eating well and really focused on the nutrition to help brain chemistry. Let's say that that brought it up to where the nutrition kept it to where, you know, from the drug perspective, you went from it managing it 90% down to maybe 30%. So maybe you started to take some at some level, but the nutrition really balanced things out quite a bit. That is possible. But again, you've got to work with your doctor on that and have somebody that can come up with a game plan and walk you through it. So 
I mean, can you come off of them? Only they can tell you that. And and what I mean by that is they really have to I, – I would have to walk with you day to day and see all the progress and know – and see five years ago and know all of that, I can hear you. But to make that kind of call, they need to make that kind of call. But is it possible? Yeah, it's po- anything's possible. As long as you're willing to get brain chemistry stabilized and change your nutrition and make some steady lifestyle changes. I guess if your question is, do I always have to be taking this? I really can't answer that, but I can tell you that I've seen plenty of people not have to that have gone to live pretty steady, stable lives. So, but everybody's different, you know, and only you can stick your toe in the water or jump in the water and start walking through some of these natural things and work with your doctor and, and you guys create a good team effort around it. So I can tackle this thing about your dad and then we've got some calls I got to grab. Okay. Neuropathy of the feet, 81 years old, diabetes two. Okay. Um, Neuropathy of feet. That's, that's an easy one. Okay. Here's the deal. Now, first and foremost, obviously get his diet right, get his lifestyle habits right, exercise, and drink plenty of water, half his body weight in ounces of water every single day. Type 2 diabetes, pretty easy to tackle in the regard of a neuropathy. Vitamin B6, pyridoxamine. Now, they have actually taken that and made a prescription out of it. So if he wants, his doctor can probably write him a script, and he can get it. Of course, it's not going to be a whole food-based vitamin, which I'm a bigger fan of. You can go to the health food store and get pyridoxamine, which is that certain molecule variety of vitamin B6, and it can be extremely helpful with what he's going through. It makes a huge difference within that neuropathy. And, of course, again, omega-3 fatty acids and vitamin D, those go hand-in-hand hand as well when you're dealing with something like that. But, I mean, his diet is a key. Getting the pancreas functioning at a better level, getting the receptors working better in, with type 2 diabetes, all of that coming up with a game plan. It might be something kind of cool for you guys to do together as far as the dietary changes, keep each other accountable. It's always fun to do it with someone when you're making changes like that. But, I mean, at the end of the day, that's kind of the key to really go to the next level, in my opinion, because with him and the neuropathy, it's a simple deficiency. And it comes from poor diet over a long period of time that builds up, and then you get the deficiency, and then there you go. So anyway, hope that helps. Thanks for the call. 888 Lines are open. Questions about your health? Let's go to Dale. Hi, Dale. Hey, man. you got a really interesting program. I really enjoy it. Well, thanks a lot. Appreciate that. How can I help? I'm 57 years old. I weigh 250 pounds. I'm 6'4". I'm in pretty good health overall. I've been going through some things, and I'd like to just kind of do a reset just to... uh, you know, just to be able to have some time to think uh, real clearly about about some issues in my life and just kind of, like I said, just do a reevaluation and a reset and drop some weight and get a lot of toxins out of my body. I've been on the road for years and years and just have to eat fast food all the time. And I was wondering about your opinion on going, about going on a long, like an extended, like a 28-day fast nothing but water well the reset button is a couple things when you want to kind of reset and kind of do a jump start and reboot everything there are some basic principles that i teach that everyone needs to follow i think no matter what you're dealing with and i'll tell you what we'll we'll jump into that when i come out of this break There's some basic principles, but there's some certain keys there, including a partial day fast that can be very helpful to clean the system out, stimulate your body's own natural detoxification system, and increase hormones like growth hormone, which is kind of our fountain of youth hormone. And I'll explain how all that works when we come back. Connect with On Call Radio and watch On Call TV at InShapeNetwork.com. Lines are open, 888-283-7272. Welcome back to the show. This is the show where your health is your greatest wealth. Dale, we were talking and going into the break and just coming up with a new game plan of really what it means to kind of reset the body. We're talking about doing a partial day fast, what that can do, 
And there's a lot of things. I've kind of got my basic steps of what I usually teach. Number one is you always want to start changing the way you eat. Change the way you eat, you'll change the way you live. So the anti-inflammatory diet, great way to go on that. First things first, and I think that's the most important change anyone can make on a regular basis. Number two is to start using the foundational four supplements. These are the four basic nutrients that our bodies need regardless, no matter because our food supply is depleted, no matter how organic it is. Our soil is depleted. That's a good whole food multivitamin, digestive enzymes to break down your food better, cod liver oil for the omega-3 fats, vitamin A, vitamin D, and probiotics, which put the good bacteria back in the digestive tract. So all of that's important, foundational four. Number three is to get your blood work done every six months from a nutritional-based analysis with your physician so you can see what kind of nutritional deficiencies might be happening within the body. So that's also something that's really beneficial. Then drinking water. Half your body weight in ounces of non-chlorinated, I like distilled water. Uh, It just increases overall function of the body, helps you Uh, Of course, burn body fat. It cleanses the body. Just a great thing and great habit to get into. And then number five is exercise 30 minutes a day, five days a week, doing something you enjoy. So those are five real key categories. The fasting comes in and can really stimulate. And a lot of people don't do that, but partial day fast one day a week is so vital. Because when you fast, it's proven and research has shown that when you when you go through a fasting period, that it releases key hormones in the body that increase longevity, like your human growth hormone levels. They go through the roof when you go through periods of not eating. And so that's why they repair, when your body repairs at night and you go through that fasting period while you're sleeping, that's why the growth hormone is released at night. And you can actually get that same process happening during the day if you cut down and you, you go through a fast. You can do vegetable juices, Uh, and things of that nature throughout the day. But you want to keep the food to a minimum and keep the water intake up. Yeah, that makes a huge difference. But we've always known that partial day fast or any type of fasting can be beneficial to the body as long as it's controlled and it's under a doctor's supervision at some level, and they give you the okay to do that, you know, provided you don't have any major blood sugar issues or or anything going on. So just a couple things to think about. I, I think that if you're wanting to get that reboot, you know, that's a good way to go because so many times we get in a rut and we just keep doing the same things over and over again and we don't we expect different results but that's never going to happen we got to make radical changes so would you say that in the middle of this with what you're looking at uh, would those changes be tough for you or you think you can pull through and make those happen yeah especially if I had the list that you just spoke about uh, in writing somewhere (laughs) yeah well, you can you can drop those down. You can call our office during the day. Uh, our office, the, there's a staff of people that will be able to get all that information to you and get you the resources and things that you need uh, to, to be successful with that. Because the reality is, once you start down this journey, you'll be amazed that when you look back, you're like, I can't believe I ever lived the way I did, that, that I'm healthier than I've ever been, I feel better than I ever have, and you'll notice such a big difference in your overall health. So they get in touch with the staff. They'll be able to give you all the details of what we just chatted about. 888-283-7272. Lines are open with questions about your health. Red onions are our food for the day. They can be used as vegetables. They can be used as uh, spices, and some even call it medicine. But the following are some of the health benefits are onions. I love food for the day because food can really be our best medicine. They have thiosulfonates which are present in the red onion, and they have antimicrobial properties. So our foods, every single week, you remember this, the foods that you eat every single day, can and will determine the kind of health you're going to have tomorrow. And this is one of the great components. I love red onions. I love to cook with them. I love to eat them just raw uh, on, on whatever I'm eating with vegetables. They're just, it's phenomenal. So the red onion has strong antibacterial properties, and it's effective against bacillus, E. coli, and salmonella. The red onion has also some importance as it's a remedy for various diseases, as early Americans used it for cough and cold, asthma, and insect repellent. In Chinese medicine, it's used to treat coughs, breathing problems, bacterial infections, and angina, which is kind of the tightening of the chest. The World Health Organization supports the use of red onions to treat asthma, cold, cough, and bronchitis. So they actually support that. And you'd be amazed, actually, from more of a natural-based perspective, 
the World Health Organization how many things that they do support as far as foods being supportive to our overall health. Red onions also have plenty of fructo-oligosaccharides, which stimulate the growth of bifidobacteria, which is good, healthy gut bacteria, and suppresses the growth of harmful bacteria in the colon. Red onions are also natural anti-clotting agents and help suppress platelet clumping due to their sulfur content. Consumption of these also can reduce the risk of stomach cancer and ulcers. They're also extremely important for healthy bones. Do I need to go over anything else? Are you going to start eating the red onions? Because it makes a big difference, and they're cheap especially today. So the red onions are also less in calories and fats. Now, your wife or your husband may not like you. That's a big warning when you eat a bunch of red onions. So you may not be kissing anybody. Matter of fact, you may not be talking to anybody. They may run the other way. But look at all the health benefits. So it's Catch-22, or you might like that with your spouse. Eat a bunch of onions, they'll leave you alone. Puts another hour in the charts. I'd like to thank my producer, Jay Patrick, Leslie Pardue, John Garrison, and the rest of the team. Our scripture for the day, John chapter 16, verse 33, says, I've told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you'll have trouble, lots of it, but take heart, I have overcome the world. May I give you a diagnosis, but remember this, God is the only one that can give you a true prognosis. The great physician has a prescription for you to live your best life now. Forget about the past. It's gone. Focus on today. That's your gift. And realize your best days are still ahead. This show is designed to provide accurate information of a general nature on the subject matter covered. And given with the understanding that neither the host nor the station is engaged with rendering any form of medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. This information is not approved by the FDA and is not intended to diagnose, prevent, treat, or cure any disease. To experience more of ASA RX audio, visit us at asarx.com.